Hi everyone, I am Venetia and today I'll be sharing my ultimate guide to cybersecurity operations. Welcome to my channel where we learn all about cybersecurity and how you can succeed as a woman in cybersecurity. If you are looking for the ultimate guide to cybersecurity operations, then this is the perfect video for you. We'll go through what I've learned as an industry expert and see how it can apply to you or your career journey. Now, as always, before we get started, here is your cybersecurity tip for the week. And this week, I want to advise you not to connect to public networks. Public Wi-Fi networks are just a bad idea. They're just not secure enough. And so it really leaves the opportunity for uh, threat actors to gain access to your device or your data in a really seamless and easy way. Uh, they could do eavesdropping, man in the middle attacks, etc. So it's really not secure. And if you are connecting to a public Wi-Fi, then don't access any sensitive applications, data systems, corporate resources, or anything of the sorts. Even though it's free, just don't do it. All right, so this video will be part one of a video series that I will be doing around breaking down the different areas of focus within cybersecurity. We have discussed that cybersecurity is, you know, really the umbrella term and there's so many uh, different fields, industries, job types that you can explore within cybersecurity. And so you've really got to streamline that and narrow it down. And this is the first part in longer part video series and um, that I'll be doing discussing these different focus areas. Now the, there's a lot of good information that explains these different domains and really defines the domains and breaks them down. You can go and have a look at ISC squared, how they've broken down the eight domains of CISSP. SANS has a great breakdown and then NIST of course is a great fundamental resource for you to understand the cyber workforce framework etc as always all the links to these resources will be uh, in the description box below now it is really important for you to understand your options as you're trying to build out your cyber security career the industry is massive as i've mentioned before and you won't be able to learn everything at least not in a short amount of time so what you want to do is focus on something and build the skills, get the, the credentials, etc., um, to explore that option and get into the workplace in that way. And that's what we'll be doing today by breaking down the security operations domain. All right, before we dig into this, please remember if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's start by defining what is cybersecurity operations. Now again, security operations is a really big term. It's a really broad focus area. And there's many different roles that form part of security operations as a focus area. So in this area, we typically cover the concepts of detect, prevent, and respond. So the you'll have cybersecurity analysts with the ability to proactively investigate and detect threats based on alarms that's being raised. That's typically where uh, the security operations center sits under security operations domain. And then that's typically where you'll find your SIM kind of controls. Then we'll have the security engineers who will sort of execute the prevent function of that. So the analyst has alerted us to a potential malicious detection and we now need the engineers to go and build the systems, implement the systems, configure the controls, etc., to be able to prevent those attacks in future. And then we also have the responders that respond to the threat. So if we have a validated threat in our organization, then we need to have an entire response team to help us respond to those incidents. So let's break this down even further and let's talk about detection. With detection, we're looking to identify a potential threat. So we've got a set of controls in place. This could be a SIM, it could be some form of logging tools, it could be an endpoint detection and response system where threat hunting can be executed from. But we have a set of controls and on those set of controls, we'll have some form of log. And we will have the security analysts then actively monitoring those logs because there will be behavior that's normal, that we know is known to our organization. This is our IP addresses, this is our indicators, etc. And and that is all good normal be normal behavior for our organization. And then 
we will have the possible malicious indicators. So these could be, you know, uh, malicious file hashes that's been triggered, um, IP addresses, you know, we could see some types of attacks like, you know, denial of service attacks. We could see some botnets making out their communication to the CNC controllers, etc. And that's really typically what the security analyst will keep an eye on. And the security analyst will then be able to um, understand and investigate when something has triggered, whether it's actually a legitimate threat or not. And it's important to understand that this cybersecurity analyst operates before a threat has materialized or has been confirmed. And it's a really proactive um, kind of space where the analyst operates to try and understand whether this could be a potential threat, then stop that threat or the attack if it's just on one computer or one identity or in one application, etc. And then try and put the controls in place to prevent that. Now, some of the other tools here that I don't think is often mentioned, but that also forms part of the service is actually tools like vulnerability management tools. And, and this is also where some of the blue teaming can take place. So where your ethical hackers would be. Because once we identify vulnerabilities, we've got to understand how relevant and critical it is to our systems and our environment. And so that's where we have the blue team really come into play and help us to potentially try and exploit those threats to see how exploitable it is in our environment so that we can remediate those threats where needed and in a priority as needed. Because if something is a critical vulnerability but it doesn't pertain to us, then it's irrelevant to our business. Context is everything. So we've got to understand that there is a larger team here that may not form part of the SOC itself but they will be consulted um, as part of the security operations and the SOC operations. And more often we, we also see some of the red teamers come over and they try and exploit the, the potential vulnerabilities or threats that they find. And then we have the blue team trying to actively put in the right kind of controls um, to mitigate those threats identified by the red team. And it's really that, you know, um, proactive uh, and defense kind of offense and defense uh, kind of protection and enhancement of our cybersecurity defense side of things. So some of the typical roles that we see here is uh, cybersecurity analysts, SOC analysts, vulnerability assessors, um, and sometimes in the SOC itself we also see some ethical hackers etc. Now if we're looking at the prevention side so this is the configuration that we do the tools that we implement to actually go about preventing those attacks. So it's very important that these two things work cohesively. We've got to be able to detect something even if we are not able to prevent it but we work to find a way to try and prevent it. But visibility is everything, right? So visibility is first prize with everything. And if we can then prevent those attacks that we see, then great. So we have firewalling infrastructure here. We have app gateways. We have endpoint security. We have application security controls. We really have a lot of controls and we require a lot of different skill sets and understanding of a whole of a lot of different platforms to be able to uh, really execute on the security engineering implementation of controls, configuration of controls, maintaining the controls, etc. And the roles that we typically see in here would be network security engineers, you know, that would maybe operate at controls on the network layer, application security engineers, DevSecOps type of professionals. We also see endpoint and system engineers that operate at the level of system security. So on the preventative side, more often we see the engineering staff complement that, you know, configure the systems, enhance the systems and get our controls in place to prevent the attacks in future. So then from the response side, so this is in a case where the attack might have been a zero day type attack, so never been seen before, um, no IOCs, and it passed through our detection controls without alerting the SOC analysts, um, or 
it has alerted the SOC analysts, but it's widespread and it's now an actual incident in our organization. And here is where the incident response comes into effect. Now, incident response is not just for a scenario where there is a massive incident and the organization is shutting down business operations and they need to respond to an incident. We actually have day-to-day -day incident responders as part of the SOC as well to investigate, you know, email threats, email compromises, etc. Because if we can understand how a small compromise happens, then it helps us to understand whether that small compromise which was a part of a larger attack chain. And it helps us to then better enhance our detection controls. So you have incident responders that form part of the SOC team and then you have incident responders that come from the outside and help us respond to threats. And most of the time we see in larger businesses they may have an entire incident response team with you know incident response analysts, forensic investigators, etc. And then we also see that in smaller organizations this might be a function that they rely on a third party for. And so we really require highly skilled incident responders forensic investigators, malware analysts, malware reverse engineers, etc. to be able to help us with the function of responding to an incident. And here, what we want to achieve is really to contain the threat that we've observed, eradicate that threat, and make sure we can return our business processes to normal after an incident. All right, so do you have to be technical to work in the security operations area? And here largely the, the answer is going to be yes. From an analyst perspective, we require, you know, basic cybersecurity knowledge and understanding. From an engineer perspective, we require really a bit more advanced skills. And as I've mentioned, looking at the layered approach or defense in depth. You'll have firewalls, applications, endpoints, systems, etc. to secure. And so it's not expected that you need to work across the spectrum. Um, so if you want to, you know, focus and zone into being a network security engineer, then definitely go and learn the networking components first and understand that first. Even within the domain of security operations, you are still going to have to understand what is it that you want to do. So do you want to be in the defense side as a cybersecurity analyst? Do you want to be in the preventative side, more to the engineering side? Or do you want to be on the response side? So incident responders, etc. And for the incident response side, there may be more um, type of coding and analysis kind of experience because you would need to do some form of reverse engineering to understand, you know, what that malware does, how that threat actually executes on systems, etc. There is a lot of focus on technical skills in the security operations domain. All right, friends, that is it for this video. I hope that you found it informative. In the next video, I will be covering threat intelligence as a focus domain. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely subscribe um, to make sure not to miss that video. Catch you next time. Bye.